Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a star burr and this is a really fun quick project that most people could make in an hour or two. So let's dive in and take a look at it. Oddly enough, this project is going to start with red oak. I know, weird, right? But no, I had this stick of red oak that's an inch and a half by inch and a half, and uh, I figured it worked out well for this. Now, the interesting thing about this is the first measurement you need is the diagonal width of the board. And in my case, that's whatever the diagonal width is. Uh, so I need to actually make the sticks longer than twice the diagonal width. And I actually added about a quarter inch on either end, so about a half inch longer than twice the diagonal width, if that makes sense. Uh, you can make them any length you want, just make sure that they are at least uh, twice the diagonal width. So we're going to cut off six blocks at whatever that length is. And the nice thing about these is they never have to be exactly the same length. They just have to be relatively close to it. Uh, there's not going to be any joinery that connects with the ends, and so you can make them whatever you want. Six of them, and now we can move on. This is going to be made with um, basically cutting two bird's mouths into the corner of each one of these. So I need to find out where the center mark is, and then I need to know the diagonal width of the board and move out from that center point that much. Now I do want to leave a little bit of gap in the middle, so I'm moving about an eighth inch. So I'm going to be starting about a sixteenth inch away from the center line and then moving that diagonal gap in. The miter gauge is then set up to 55 degrees. Okay, it's actually about 55.46 something, so 55 and a half degrees. And I don't really care it being dead on. I just put it to about that and got it on there. And so having a, a good compass to figure that out really helps things out. So we're going to draw a line and cut a bird's mouth into the corner. And we're going to draw this line on two adjacent faces. And then you cut down until you just get to the corner on both sides, rotate it again, and cut down the other side. And always eyeball which side you're on. And so I'm going to be working back and forth until I get it close. And then I can then come in with a chisel and trim it back just up to that line and get a nice tight corner at the bottom. And this is a really fun step where you get to just detail and, and uh, zone out. The nice thing about this project is these don't have to be perfect. They just have to be close enough to fit into each other. So, yeah, your first couple aren't going to look amazing, but the next couple, well, they'll look even better. And you can see how it's a relatively nice, tight fit. Happy. We cut one mouth here. That means we need to cut 11 more of them, two on each block. And every block is exactly the same. And uh, that's, that's about it. The, the, the puzzle is done. Um, yeah, it's a really fun, simple project. Uh, but there's a lot more little details and other things like that you can do. So there's one block with so two bird's mouths cut in. We're just going to repeat the process on all other uh, of the blocks. So, <laughs> yeah, um, projects like this may seem a bit tedious, but honestly, they're a really good chance to learn a skill, to practice and do it over and over again. And the more you can do it, the better you're going to get at it. And you'll find that your first few don't look all that great. But by the end, they're actually looking really, really good. And so if you want to, you can make three or four more extra sticks and then pick your favorites of them to go together. Now, after this, uh, things become a little bit more... Um, you can make it whatever you want. And you'll see all sorts of weird designs on the ends of these. And I decided to leave mine square because then it stands up on end and I like that look. But uh, there's lots of other things. But understand that this is where most of the work is going to go. You're going to spend a lot of time doing layout. And then you're going to spend a lot of time cutting. And then you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning up. And then you're going to spend a lot of time detailing. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just take it step by step. And it may seem like a lot of work, but it relatively goes quickly. Um, the whole process took me a little less than an hour to do all six of these pieces, clean them up and finish them and have a finished product. So it's a, um, a surprisingly simple project that uh, can teach you a lot. So yeah, um, lay them all out, cut them all, and then detail them all. Um, so yeah, um, more of the same. Now you will also notice when I'm cutting this, I have them clamped in the vise on diagonal and then also at an angle. And so because technically we are cutting a compound angle, it is nice to set it up so that the saw isn't at a compound angle. The saw is still vertical and that makes it uh, relatively, uh, it just kind of clicks in the brain to make it a little bit easier to clean up. For the actual chisel work, you can undercut the middle a little bit without having any notice because there isn't a 
structural jointery uh, gluing. You don't have to worry about perfect surfaces. You just have to worry about that outside line. And so a lot of times I'll just start the chisel on that outside line and then let it dive in just a little bit on the inside and uh, belly out the inside. As long as that outside line is where it is, then that's where it needs to be. And just like that, we have six blocks ready to go. And then we can play with actually trying to get this to fit together. And uh, the first time you put it together, it's like, wait a second, how does this actually go together? Um, but once you understand it, 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 it's relatively quick. You just have to be, um, you have to have the dexterity for it. Also, make sure that they do fit together. And you may find that one of them, eh, it's just a little bit tight. And you can come back and detail it in. Um, I did all of the detail work with a chisel, but if you want to make it even more accurate and, and spend some time on it, you could come in with a file and uh, smooth out all those inside edges and corners and make everything fit perfectly. Uh, so it's it's one of these projects you could take as far as you want or as little as you want. You can really aim for perfection and try and do the best thing you possibly can, uh, or you can just make something that's functional. And like that... We have a puzzle that's ready to go through. And the way you, you build this is you actually create two matching halves, and then they, they just slide together. And then trying to figure out which direction they go through until suddenly it pops together, and there you have it. Now, a lot of people like to um, chamfer the ends of these and turn them into points so it actually looks more like a star. Um, I was going to do that, but then I thought I actually kind of like the, the square end look um, because the star bird normally looks like a star, um, but I wanted something I could set up on end, um, so I left it the way it was. We're going to come in with a block plane and chamfer all the corners down, just kind of soften things up a little bit, make them easier to, uh, to work with, um, as well as all of the ends. And so again, here's another chance to learn some skills, because uh, it's going to take a little bit, so just buckle down and go to doing the same thing over and over again. may seem boring, uh, but actually this task has no boring steps in it at all. Because this project doesn't really need an immense amount of protection, I'm just going to do my normal boiled linseed oil and paste wax finish. It is something that goes in the hand, it's fun to play with, and make a, a quick and easy project to, to put together. So for my preferred finish, I'm going to plane it all smooth, but then I'm going to come in with some 300 grit sandpaper and just lightly touch up every side. That adds a little bit of dust to the pores and allows the um, boiled linseed oil to wick in a little bit farther and you get a little bit more uh, penetration. Nice thing about these is you can just dunk them in, flip them over, wipe them around, and uh, like that, they're, they're coated. Uh, so I'm just going to leave them with a really big, heavy coat like this and set them aside uh, probably about 15, 20 minutes and make sure they don't want any more. I might end up adding a little bit more to the end grain because those will just suck it down. Uh, but I want to let them suck up as much as that they want, and then we can wipe off the excess. Uh, I'm not into doing multiple thin coats over days and weeks and months, but if you are, then great. Um, I like just a simple, clean finish where you get to feel and see the wood. Um, it's easier, it's simpler, and uh, I kind of like the way it works. So after we let it soak up as much as it wants, we're going to wipe off the excess, polish it down a bit, and then we can apply the paste wax, let that sit for a little while, and uh, then polish that down as well. And you're left with a really nice, clean surface that feels good in the hand, and you've got a fun puzzle to set on the coffee table. Happy! <laughs> So there you have it, a star burr. This actually took me just about an hour to make. Uh, it's relatively easy and you can make it with other things on the end and shape it differently. It is a very fun project because it's, it's a bit of a challenging project. It takes some time to get those angles right and it is a great way to stretch your skills and try something different. So if you are looking for a project that is rather quick, fairly simple, but will really hone your skills, this is a good one. It, it is the whole thing of marking and laying out and putting out weird lines and then cutting to the line. And if you miss it, well, then you can always come back in and chisel it back. Um, and the nice thing about it is even if you're off a good ways, this thing will still work. It is a relatively simple puzzle and it has a great tolerance for slop. So you can really have a bit of fun with this. So if you want to stretch your skills, that's a great one, as well as it would make a great Christmas gift. You can make it fairly quickly. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, I do read through all of them and I answer as many of the questions I can get. I do learn a lot from that, so thank you for that. On top of that, that does actually help out the channel. Uh, anytime you hit like, share, subscribe, or throw comments down below, Below, even if it's just comment down below. Thank you. That means a lot. It does help us get in front of more people and it helps the channel grow. On top of that, there are a whole bunch of names over here. Those are all of the fantastic, wonderful, and benevolent people over on Patreon. Without patrons, uh, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by the viewers. 
You are the ones who quite literally keep this channel going. You keep the lights on and you keep us in front. So thank you. If you would like to help out with that, you can find out more about Patreon in the description down below or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is an oxymoron. A star burr. Stars are generally hot.